show. This, this evening, aside from our regulars, Harvey and Lyle and Vicki, our very special guests are Mama Cass Elliott and Tim Conway. and see if y'all have any questions or anything you want to talk about. Uh, all three of you. Oh, I was wondering... <laughs> I was wondering if you ever wore hot pants, and if so, why? <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> yes? Oh, I'd love to, but Flip's on NBC, and we're CBS and never the twain, you know. It's awfully hard. Oh, I'll integrate if he will. If you... <laughs> Any others? Yes? Who gave the baby her name? What baby? Erin. Erin. Oh, Erin. Erin. Well, I did. Well, we, we did, because we have a, uh, uh, my husband's niece, uh, her name is Erin, and she's just a beautiful girl and uh, very sweet, and we said, well, if it's a girl, that's what we'll call A lot of people think it's a Jewish boy. You know, because it's Aaron or Aaron, but it's a, an Irish girl. Yeah, right. Any others? Okay, don't go away. We'll be right back. From Television City in Hollywood. with Harvey Plunkett. Vicki Lawrence and Lyle Wagoner. criticism? No, of course not. That was rotten. <laughs> you can do it better? Of course. All right. Be my guest. Well, Now you know why you're painting scenery. I feel better. You know, this whole thing is pretty ridiculous anyway, my being in a streetcar named Desire. I wouldn't even be doing it if Roger wasn't directing it. That's for sure. Hey, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be over at the theater painting scenery. I'm on my way. Well, snap to it. I've got to get that scenery done. i got a show to put on. Your bow, mine pure. <laughs> You know, this whole community theater project is really dumb. Oh, honey, this can mean a lot to me. The president of the country club has made this his pet project. It's a prestige thing. Big deal. Oh, by the way, George Perkins is on his way over here to rehearse with you. Who's George Perkins? George Perkins. He's a, he's a golfing buddy of mine. I cast him in the part of Stanley. You know, the Marlon Brando part. Is he sexy? Well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? Well, uh, it, it's all in the acting. He'll get it. It's right in the acting. That must be him. Hello. Uh -huh. I'm George Perkins. Boy, you must be one heck of an actor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, George. How are you? Glad you could come. We've got a lot of work to do. Oh, this is my wife, Carol. Oh, Hello. how do you do? Very nice to meet you. Yes. Oh, you'll be playing the part of Stella. Yes. I'll be playing the part of Stanley. It's the part that Marlon Brando played in the movie. <clears throat> I won't be playing it exactly like Marlon Brando. No kidding, Mr. Perkins. Yeah, it's, uh, I have my own version. It's uh, called the Perkins version in school. That's what we call it. Okay, let's get started, shall we? Could I talk to you? Not now, honey. We've got a lot of work to do. Now, now. I want to oh, talk to you now. Okay, just relax for a minute, will you, George? Yeah. What is it, honey? You have to be kidding with him. Now, look, Carol. Roger, the part of Stanley is, is a guy who exudes animalistic sex. I mean, he's all muscle and brawn, not 150 pounds of silly putty. <laughs> You can't judge a book by its cover. 
And you can't get blood out of a turnip. I know a few of those myself. Shh, give him a chance, will you? Oh, come on, kids. Shall we get started? I haven't got too much time. I've only got a couple of days to whip this thing together, so we really have to work. We really have to concentrate. All right, now, let's, let's start with the really big scene first. You know, the famous torn T-shirt scene, OK? Now, Stanley, you've been drunk, and, and you've beaten her up. Yeah, but you're sorry about it. See, you want, you want to beg her forgiveness. Now, you're an animal sort of a guy. You got a raw sex appeal going for you there. Hey, uh, maybe you better strip down to your T-shirt to get more of the feeling for it, OK? Yeah. OK, now, Stella. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Uh, here. Here what? Right here on the, on the T-shirt. Oh, yeah, just strip down. Just oh, take your jacket off yeah. right over there. Uh, do you have a room or something I could change? <laughs> right here. Just don't, don't here? be bashful. Yeah. We're, we're all grown up. Excuse me. OK. Now, Stella. You don't want to give in, but you can't control yourself. You know, you really love the guy. You got a big thing going for him. And in the passionate embrace, you tear his T-shirt. You got that? OK, I think we can start now. Uh, George? Oh, uh, well, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, just being rehearsal and all, uh, yeah. uh, does she have to tear my shirt? It's my favorite one. <laughs> I'll try to hold back. OK, thank you. We'll just kind of mark it now for that, OK? OK, let's get in our circle. Let's concentrate. Know who we are, what we're after, what our motivation is, what we want. Relax, Carol. Come on. I see you're tense. Action. Stella, Stella, come to me, baby. Stop it, Stanley. You're an, an animal. animal. Stella, come to my arms. Oh, Stanley. Wait, watch the shirt. Cut! Cut! Cut. That wasn't even close, huh? George. I mean, Stanley, I, I want passion. I want lust. I want desire. Oh. Stella, come into my arms, baby doll. No, no, Stanley, I can't, I can't. See what I mean? Good, try it again. All right, relax, relax. Come on. Come on, relax. Come on. Get into your circle, know who you are. Could Constantly. you turn the furnace up a little bit? <laughs> Just think it's a drafty place. OK, action. I'm sorry. It's all right. Don't go until you're absolutely ready. <laughs> Stella, Stella, come into my arms. Oh, Stanley. No, oh. no, cut. Cut, no, uh, cut. Um, excuse me a minute. Uh, come here for a second, Carol. <laughs> Honey, I think I know what the problem is. You're embarrassed because I'm here, right? Wrong, I'm embarrassed because I'm here. <laughs> Listen, I, you, it may be subconscious on your part, but I think you're uptight because you, you can't play a love scene in front of your husband, right? Wrong, that has nothing to do with it. Honey, forget I'm your husband and just do the scene. Oh, I'd like to forget you're my husband. Never mind. <laughs> Let's do the scene once more, kids. Come on, let's really give it this time. A lot of intensity, a lot of... What's the matter, Jordan? You have to go somewhere? Oh. What is it? Uh, uh, look, th this isn't going to work at all. Uh, she just doesn't have it. <laughs> now, look, George. Uh, she really does have it. I mean, you, you, you just have to work with her a little bit more. You know what well, I mean? I don't know. I, 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 she's just learning. She'll get better. I don't think you get blood out of a turnip. <laughs> get that, will you, Carol? Oh, hi, Chuck. Hi, Carol. Just got back from a flight. I thought I'd stop and say hello. Oh, come on in. Oh, thanks. Oh, Chuck. Oh, hi, this Chuck. Is, uh, uh, good evening, Perkins. sir. Perkins. This is Chuck. George? How do you do? Glad to know you. Nice to see you, too. <laughs> yeah. well, pilot, huh? Wow. Oh, yeah. A lot of the big ones, I bet, huh? The biggest. Yeah. You know they got movies and uh, even cocktail lounges, everything on those, don't they? <laughs> well, we don't have movies on my flight. I just leave the door to the cockpit open and let the passengers watch me and the stewardesses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I hope I'm not breaking anything up. Well, as a matter of fact, well, we Chuck. We were just hmm? rehearsing some dumb old silly play. Carol, a streetcar named Desire is not a dumb old silly play. Uh, it certainly isn't. I did streetcar in college. You did? Stella. Stella, I want my baby doll in my arms. <laughs> Uh, 
I, uh, I think I'm gonna be running along. Uh, this isn't gonna work out. She's even worse with him, so. Uh, uh, Chuck, Carol. Oh. Carol, Chuck. He's perfect, and he's perfect. Look, I'm not holding an audition. I am. Come on, Chuck, let's do the scene where I rip your T-shirt apart. Oh, hey, that's right. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. You can do the scene with him until I get somebody else. Somebody else? You heard that's me. That's Stanley. Never mind. That man is Stanley. Forget it. He doesn't even belong to our group. Now, quiet, please. Let's get to work. You ready, Carol? <laughs> Let's get into Stella, a circle. Come on, my arm. Hurry, Did I rip your shirt? Oh, it's not my shirt. It's your blouse. <laughs> Carol, how could you behave like that in front of me? To your husband. Oh, you told me to forget about that. <laughs> I told you to forget about that with George Perk. Is not with that maniac. Uh, look, sir, if it's a blouse, I'll be glad to pay for it. Forget it. The play's off. It's canceled. Get Tris and go home. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Gee, Carol, I'm sorry I made him mad. Oh, I am too, Chuck. You know, you were really great in that scene. I was? Yeah, fantastic. If you ever decide to give up being a housewife, you've got a promising career ahead of you. Was an actress? No, it was an airline stewardess. Oh, shit. 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 Oh, I really, I, I, I had it. It was... I'm sorry. I don't even want to do the darn play anymore. <laughs> Come on, I was putting you on with Chuck like I always do. I know, I know, I know, but that's not the problem. The problem is, who am I going to get to play the part of Stanley? Well, it's got to be somebody. Wait a minute, why not me? I know the lines. I've studied the darn thing. Why don't I play it? I mean, what's wrong with a husband and wife playing a love scene together? Let's try it. No, no, I'm, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> you watch how fast I'll get you into the mood, baby. <laughs> Hey, Stella, Stella, Stella! Yeah. Oh, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. Okay, Carol. What? You just ruined a great play and a mediocre marriage. Oh! I'll be right here. Thank you. Oh, it's a nice way to spend our lunch hour, isn't it? Yeah, you know, being around books is so <laughs> it's educational. Yeah. You know, I'd like to buy something, but I just don't know what to pick out. Oh, here, I read this one last month. Eat and lose weight. What happened? Well, I, I got as far as eat, and then I didn't understand the rest. Yeah. Oh, here's that good new exercise book, Put on Inches, Where It Counts. You know, I read this, and I put on three inches. Where? Right there. <laughs> yeah, I'm really kind of sick of all these books on self-improvement, how to diet, how not to diet. It really is kind of a bore, you know? Yeah, I agree. I want something more meaningful, more uplifting, more lasting, you know? You're right. I'll ask the girl. <clears throat> Where are the dirty books? <laughs> At section B. Right, thank you. And C, and D, and E. Good. No, no, not me. I'm not gonna look at those sick, weird books. Uh, sick and weird, sections G, H, I, and J. <laughs> oh, come on, Natalie. Don't be so uptight. All right, I'll keep you company, but I'm not gonna look. Thank you. Oh, look, the sensuous woman, the sensuous man. Oh, look at this one. What? The sensuous child. <laughs> Where'd that come from? I guess from the sensuous man and the sensuous woman. <laughs> come 
Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, look, this is the number one bestseller in the country. A thousand and one intimate secrets illustrated. Everyone is reading it. Bernice, would you put down that trash and let's get out of here now? Come on, Bernice. Bernice. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's impossible. <laughs> more, more. Oh, I would die if anybody ever caught me looking at this. Uh-oh. Oh! <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, I was looking for the theology section. Boy, are you in the wrong place. <laughs> well, it certainly is gratifying to see young people interested in books. Uh, for a while, I thought reading was a lost art. <laughs> young lady, is anything the matter? No, Father, I just seem to have this growth on my finger. Well, you should have it looked at. Uh, yeah, well, I wouldn't if I were you. <laughs> I hope you'll feel better. Oh, thank Good you. Day. Well, let's get out of here. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. Look, there's only one copy left. Let's buy it before somebody else does. Are you kidding? I wouldn't be caught dead buying that book. Now, look, will you stop being so silly? They have sold thousands of copies. There is nothing to be ashamed of. We'll just go up to the girl at the desk and we'll pay her for the book, and that's it. Now, here's my half, and I'll meet you outside. Oh, wait, just a minute. I just can't do it. Yes, you can. I can't. You can. No, I can't. Look, Natalie, you have got to learn to overcome these fears. You have to prove something to yourself. All right. I just proved something to myself. What? I can't. Oh, Natalie. Well, all right. All right, I'll do it, but we're going to do it together. I'm not going to do it alone. We'll go together and we'll walk right up to the girl. And you're not a girl, you're a man. You're a man. There was a girl here. Where's the girl? You're a man. Well, she went to lunch. The girl went to lunch. The girl went to lunch. That's a man back there. I can't buy this book from a man. What if I'd meet him at a party and he'd want to ask me out? What would I do? Bring along the book. Natalie, that's not funny. Come on, we're going to be late for the office. Uh, can, can I help you? Yeah, well, well you see, I am. Um, I have I have this uh, uh, table at home, and it it has uh, four legs. But one one of the little legs uh, is a little bit shorter than the other little leg, and this book seems to be just about the perfect size for it. So how much do I owe you? I don't know. I can't see the book. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Tell them you're buying it for a sick friend. <laughs> um, I, I want to buy this sick book for a friend. <laughs> Uh, I, want, I, want, I, I want to buy this book. Uh, lady, I can't hear you. <laughs> I want to buy this book. <laughs> oh, you mean a thousand and one intimate look, secrets look, illustrated, right? Uh, look, look, look. See, I'm, I'm really very embarrassed about this. So how, how much do I owe you? About uh, seven ninety-five. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, hey, wait a minute. This may be on sale. Let me check. Hey, Herbie, is this dirty book on sale? <laughs> Here, here, I'll, I'll pay the full price. Want me to gift wrap it? No, keep the change. Let's get out of here. If anybody knows I bought, bought that book, I'd just die. Oh, excuse me, uh, just a moment. Uh, did you just buy this book? No, I bought it for a sick table. Congratulations. Just... This is your lucky day. You are the 100,000th person to buy this book. No. All right, reporters, here no. she is right here. Smile, dear. for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show. Of all the sketches that Tim Conway has done on our show, uh, this is our fifth season, I think the most memorable one is the one where he played the inexperienced dentist. And tonight, oh, you remember, of course, by popular request, we're going to show it again. And so here, assisted by Harvey Corman as the patient, is Mr. Tim Conway. Right this way, Mr. Schlesinger. Oh, thank you. It always seems to happen on a Sunday, doesn't it? Oh, boy, I tell you, it really hurts. Dr. Kiefer will be with you in a minute. Dr. Kiefer? What happened to Dr. Burmar? Oh, he's out of town. He's breaking in a new partner, his son-in-law. Doesn't hurt that much. You won't find another dentist on a Sunday. 
Yeah, I guess you're right. You, you, you sure you know, you know, he knows what he's doing? Dr. Kiefer just graduated from dental school. As a matter of fact, you're his very first patient, so he may be a little nervous. He won't be the only one. <laughs> Dr. Kiefer? Yes, Your ma'am. first patient is waiting. Ha! <laughs> he's still here. Doctor, he's waiting. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Well, I thought we were just going to come in and practice today. I didn't know we were going <clears> to... <throat> He'll be right with you. Yeah. Hello. Hello, doctor. Uh, well, that'll be twenty dollars. <laughs> twenty dollars? You, you, you haven't done anything yet. Fifteen? Maybe. <laughs> Look, doctor, please listen to me. I, I, I have a terrible toothache. I am in terrible pain. I want you to do something to stop the pain. Either fill the tooth or pull it. Oh, gosh. Uh, why? Seize. C's? Yeah, see, in dental school and filling and pulling, I only got C's. That was just kind of an average grade. <laughs> I got A's in cleaning, though. You want me to clean it for you? <laughs> well, will it stop the pain? No, but it'll look great. Boy, I can polish it right up. <laughs> Give me the C's. Give me the C's. C's. Oh, boy. Gosh, uh, well, I... I cheated on my final. <laughs> uh, I, and besides, I had mononucleosis the last semester, so I didn't get a chance to work on people like the other guys, so most of my work was just done with animals. I don't, I don't care about animals. Just please fix this tooth. Yeah, but it isn't the same working on animals and people. I, Doctor, I, I don't care. Please, I'm in terrible pain. Yeah. Please. Well, I, please give it a try. <laughs> It's a doggy treat. <laughs> you want to go outside for a while? No, I'm fine. Oh. Thank you. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Claire, well, please stop. You please do something about this tooth. Yeah, right. Well, I guess uh, you better wash up. <laughs> All right, I better wash up. <laughs> no sense in you washing up. You wouldn't be putting your hand in my mouth, so I'll, I'll wash up. <laughs> there we go. Say, say, did you hear the one about the guy who had an electric toothbrush? He used to brush av after every meal and then see his electrician twice a year. Uh, brush, brush, brush your teeth, brush them every day. Mother, sister, brother, father, brush them every way. School song. Oh. <laughs> ah, well, <clears throat> let's just oh. have, have an old look at that here. Excuse me, man. Mm. Just, uh, let's see now. All right. Oh, on second thought, I don't think I will take a look at it. <laughs> well, well, now what? Well, my mother gave me these for graduation. Well, so what? Well, you're going to get them all icky. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. You won't. I, no, I won't. Okay, well, maybe, maybe we can just wait till it falls out, you know. Please, please, doctor. Okay. Ah. Mm -hmm. ah. Ah, see? I was right. What? Well, you got it all icky. <laughs> Here you go. Better rinse out a little bit. There Thanks. you go. Just rinse out. Mm. Thought, and then we'll... Mm. 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 Uh, mm. I don't have a bowl. Uh, Mama's gonna get me that too, but uh, she just ordered it. It won't be here till Tuesday. You wanna wait till Tuesday? You don't wanna wait, huh? Okay. Oh, doctor, please, please get this, get this tooth out of my mouth right. now. Well, okay. ah, ah. Let's see now. If we're going to pull her out, we'll have to have those pulley things. These pulleys and let's see, pinchy things and the little picky things. There, pinchy picky pulley. <laughs> see, I'll get my manual. Just a minute on that. All right, here. Okay, now let's see. You want to pull your tooth out? Uh, P P P U. T-U-L-L. -L. Pull tooth. T. T. T-O. 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 T-H. Here we are. Pull your tooth out. 
Boy, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> Doctor, if it's gonna hurt, please give me something to kill the pain. Yeah, okay, well, got some Novocaine right here. Just, oh. uh, hold on that, man. Let's see how this works here. Okay, Novocaine. Here we are, Novocaine. Take a firm hold of the hypodermic needle. Right. <laughs> There'll be a little bit of pain, and then numbness will set in. tonight and be sure and be with us next week when our guests will be Barbara McNair and Andy Griffith and please give some thought to pollution and health we can't have both oh and be sure and watch my buddy Julie Andrews and me next Tuesday December 7th on CBS I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh or sing a song Seems we just get started, and before you know it, comes the time we have to say so long.
Number three was played by Joel Christopher.